Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. Months after an interview with KSAT, that DPS trooper now off the job. What an investigation into the Uvalde school shooting revealed coming up. And a new poll released on the governor's race just days away from early voting beginning. But what is the data trying to tell voters? That story in just a moment, but first. More fallout tonight in Uvalde, a DPS trooper now fired. Sergeant Wal Ma Juan Maldonado is one of seven members of Texas DPS troopers under investigation by the agency's inspector general. Now we're learning that his case was actually the first to be completed and he's the first one disciplined. Back in June, he told KSAT that he was good friends with Eva Mireles and he was there during her final moments. She, of course, was one of the teachers who was killed during the shooting. Maldonado was accused of not following active shooter protocol on the day of the shooting at Robb Elementary. Officials say that security camera footage revealed that Maldonado stood idly by when another officer ran out of the building while bleeding and begging others to go in. Former DPS officer Crimson Elizondo is also one of those seven troopers under investigation. She left the department to work for Uvalde CISD, but was then later fired. We're still waiting for the inspector general's final report on Elizondo to wrap up and be released. We will, of course, keep you updated. Switching gears now, the countdown to the polls on Monday. Early voters are going to cast their ballots in several races, including the one for governor. But will the votes reflect what a new poll is revealing in the matchup between Governor Greg Abbott and his challenger, Beto O'Rourke? The night team's Alyssa Cole spoke with a political expert about key issues impacting this race. I believe in abortion rights for women and equal rights for everybody. I'm really interested in like the Board of Education issue, specifically what's being taught in schools. The real estate taxes are way too high, especially in my area. The latest numbers from UT Austin's Texas Politics Project shows more than half of Republican voters say immigration and border security are the most important. While Democrats' priorities are more dispersed between abortion, health care, gun violence and climate change. So the question is, you know, are Texans going to essentially vote the way they voted in the past? Political science expert John Taylor says polling centered around the race for governor is a solidified base of support for both candidates. So Governor Greg Abbott and challenger Beto O'Rourke are looking to the independent voters. So it comes down to independent voters. And that block of independent voters seem right now to be leaning more toward Abbott than O'Rourke. Abbott is leading by 11 points in this poll, but Taylor explains this snapshot of numbers cannot predict the future. Next week, there could be another poll um, that all of a sudden shows Abbott with a four point lead. You know, polling is, is, is a snapshot as much as it is anything else. It's a snapshot in time, depending on when and where you're t doing this poll. Now, just a reminder, early voting will be starting this Monday, and we have a voter guide with everything you need to know before you go to the polls on our website at ksat.com. Now, early voting will run through November until November 4th, and election day is November 8th. Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Alyssa, thank you for that. Another news now, a local vice principal wants a public apology from the Bear County Sheriff after a case against her was dismissed. You remember this story back in April, Tara Hunter was arrested and cameras were rolling as deputies led her into the Bayer County Jail to be booked. A five-year-old student said that she had pushed him into a filing cabinet in her office. That's something she said never happened. The Bayer County Sheriff held a news conference back then. And last month, prosecutors dismissed that case because there wasn't enough evidence. And now Hunter wants the sheriff to come back and hold a second news conference this time she wants him to clear her name. I do not feel vindicated because the same atmosphere and platform that I was smeared on has not been wrong, has not been made right. So Hunter is planning to return to work at a new idea campus, but she's worried that some parents will still believe the original accusation. Now to an ex-Border Patrol agent on trial for a string of murders. Today, jury selection began right here in Bear County. Juan David Ortiz lives in Laredo, but his case was brought here after a judge granted a change of venue in the case. He is accused of killing multiple sex workers. The trial isn't Ortiz's only connection here to San Antonio. He obtained his master's degree from St. Mary's University 
and it was also accepted to the San Antonio Police Academy, but he turned down their offer to work with Border Patrol instead. Ortiz was also a husband, father, and Navy veteran. Investigators interrogated him after his arrest for nearly nine hours. They say he admitted to killing the sex workers to, quote, clean the streets of Laredo. His trial set to begin here November 28th. Now for a look at today's top headlines in your Night Beat News Flash. Remember that San Antonio child psychologist arrested on a child sex abuse charge? Well, even after police arrested him, he still had a contract with Child Protective Services. Dr. Timothy Kimball was arrested for indecency with a child by contact on August 24th. KSAT obtained a letter showing the state didn't terminate Kimball until this past Wednesday, a day after KSAT reported the arrest. The state says that Kimball didn't tell them about the arrest despite being required to do so. So here's one time that FaceTime actually helped during a crash. A teen was saved from a rollover crash after a girlfriend of one of the passengers in that car noticed that something was up during the call. You know, when you crash, everything goes forward and like I, I saw them like go forward and then you could hear it like if they hit something. So that's Sierra Martinez. She says that she woke up her mom, called 911 and drove to the crash site on Loop 1604 near Braun Road. Now, one of the victims was rushed to the hospital with a puncture wound. Martinez's boyfriend, who was a passenger in the car, actually got up from the wreckage on his own. Pretty lucky. Police think the driver may have been speeding right before the crash, but they got help quickly. A federal appeals court has placed a temporary hold on President Biden's student debt relief program. It's a case that brought on by six Republican led states. That order prohibits the White House from canceling loans covered under the new forgiveness policy as the appeals court considers the GOP state's challenge to that policy. The states argue that the Biden administration doesn't have the legal authority to grant broad student loan forgiveness. A district court dismissed the case earlier this week, ruling that the states did not have the legal standing to bring the challenge. So now we're going to have to wait and see how the appeals process plays out. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Okay, now we're going to take a live look outside right there where the parking garage for San Antonio Zoo is lit up in pink. Why? Well, it's for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And tonight, we're hearing from a local woman who beat that disease. I can't even describe what I felt. Overwhelmed, shocked. And now the survivor is using her experience to help other patients. How is she stepping up to support those who are now struggling? That's next on The Night Beat. A cancer diagnosis can be among the most difficult moments in a person's life. Navigating treatments and therapy can only add to that challenge. That's right. And during Breast Cancer Awareness Month, the night team's Alyssa Cole introduces us to an important resource for patients. You actually get the diagnosis. Uh, I can't even describe what I felt. Overwhelmed, shocked. Uh, I think you think the worst. Once a patient, Debbie Williams is now a volunteer. Williams was diagnosed with stage two breast cancer in 2011, only to be declared cancer free two years later. Tell, just telling somebody today, you don't realize how much that helps on the front end by getting those mammograms and you don't have to go through these severe treatments. After remission, Williams started a breast cancer support group at Methodist Hospital Metropolitan. She works alongside nurse navigator Pam Coolmey, who helps more than 50 patients monthly with doctor visits, treatment options, and care coordination. Once you hear those words cancer, you oftentimes don't hear anything else after that. Coolmey and Williams work together to guide patients through their cancer journeys while helping them minimize stress and confusion. When I talk to them, I try and um, find out what they've heard, what they've learned, and then reinforce that, and then kind of fill in the blanks because there, there's, there's a lot. While the lady's main responsibility is to help people overcome a difficult diagnosis, they're often inspired by their patient's strength. It's really hard when a patient gets, starts crying and gets upset, but that's actually a good thing. Uh, they're actually finally confiding in you and, and letting go, and I think that's so important. It's part of the journey that needs to be done. Nurse Colomy says she's seeing younger women in their 20s with cancer diagnosis and she encourages all women to continue self breast examinations regularly. Alyssa Cole, Case at 12 News.
Yeah, and we certainly hope that all of those women get the help that they need. All right, now we're going to take a live look outside. If we can go to that, yes, our live cam. There we go, the San Antonio Zoo, that's the parking garage there, lit up in pink in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And, uh, you know, all this month we're hearing lovely, sto great stories of, of survivors and all of that and just giving us lots of inspiration. So we certainly hope that everybody who's been diagnosed with cancer gets the help that they need and the support that they need. So. I'm Meanwhile, transitioning into weather, we are transitioning into some warmer weather this weekend. Again! Yeah, temperatures Going are on back. rise again. We can say goodbye to this fall-like field just for a few days, and then next week it returns again. And rain chances on the rise again, not through the weekend, but by Monday. Back to work, back to school, back to some scattered areas of rain. All right, let's get right to it and take a look at the overall pattern that we're looking at, what we're watching in terms of boosting our rain chances quite across the state right now, but a few factors coming together. First, you see in the Pacific Northwest areas of rain and even higher elevation snow moving in. This is a big disturbance that's dropping in and that's going to dig southward and meet up with this disturbance just west of the Baja Peninsula. They're going to combine to head toward our way and also work with a cold front and remnant moisture from what is now Hurricane Roslyn, Category 1 Hurricane Roslyn, finally getting an eye there. You can see the eye here toward the end of that lapse as it's getting stronger. Cat 1 right now, max sustained winds at 85 miles per hour, likely to become a Category 2 over the weekend and make landfall somewhere near Puerto Vallarta as a Category 2 Sunday morning. Then the remnants, once it weakens, the leftover moisture in the upper levels and some energy, it's going to cross over Mexico, then make its way into South Texas and just help out a little bit in terms of our rain chances on Monday. Also a cold front at the surface helping us out as well. Here's our future cast and I think even in the morning we could see some areas of light rain just hit or miss showers early on Monday morning. That's a result of the leftovers of Roslyn. And then the cold front moves in, boosts our rain chances even more. Not the kind of rain that everybody's going to get, but I do think the best accumulations will be north of Highway 90 where you could see an inch or so in some fortunate and lucky locations. But basically throughout the day, just some scattered showers moving through the area along with that cold front. All right, let's talk temperatures quickly. Earlier today, 56. This afternoon was 84. It was nice outside. Felt good. You now the humidity is going to be rising this weekend. At 72 right now in San Antonio, Hondo 68, Creasel Springs 61, New Braunfels here 71. For the most part, we're right around that 70 degree mark, but dipping into the 60s, especially in the hill country. Tomorrow morning, 62 degrees, low clouds, then a sunny afternoon in 87. Sunday morning, you'll really notice the humidity in the air. 68 to start the day, well into the 80s, flirting with 90 by the afternoon. Warm and breezy this weekend. You'll notice the wind out of the south southeast gusting at times between 20 and 30 miles per hour. Monday, that's our day. Right now we have it at 40% chance. We may increase those chances a little bit over the weekend, but look what happens to temperatures. Back into the upper 70s for highs by next Tuesday with mornings near 50 by Wednesday. Okay, Adam, thank you. Another busy Friday night of big game coverage, including the top 10 showdown. You know, we were out in Seguin for our five o'clock show today for the showdown in Seguin, and the big game and our big game coverage proved to be correct because this one was a nice, close fought contest at Matador Stadium. We have all the highlights for you. And the Spurs' first road trip, how they do, coming up. Game Matador started the night undefeated in District 25A Division 1. Time with Smithson Valley for first place with the number seven Canyon Cougars are right behind them. 3 and 1, 6 and 1 overall. That's why it's a big game in our big game coverage tonight. Matadors in the Canyon 7. Quarterback Corey Daly fires to Isaac Garcia on the slam for the seven yard touchdown. 7 0 Seguin. Less than a minute before half, Canyon responds. Quarterback Deuce Adams drops back, is looking deep, launches a perfect pass to his twin brother Eli Adams in the end zone for the game time 34 yard touchdown. 7 7 at the half. Third quarter, Cougars take the lead. Adams pump fakes and finds Xavion Nolan wide open at the goal line with a 26-yard score, 14-7 Canyon. The final from Seguin. The Cougars win it 27-14.
Our energy changed in the second half. We came out a little slow. We came out with no energy. We came out with a little, little energy, but we weren't executing. In the second half, we came out executing and we won. All right, the Burbank Bulldog, Harlandale Indians sharing some love. Second quarter, Harlandale up 7-0. But well, the Bulldogs answer back. Quarterback Kevin Hernandez keeps it on the option read. Scores on the three-yard touchdown. The extra point is blocked. Harlandale still leads 7-6. to six. Let's see who takes over second in District 14-5A. Division 2, Burbank takes it 32-22. Bulldogs take over that second place. Say hello to Highlands cheerleaders over SAISD Sports Complex. Owls taking on Lanier late third quarter. Highlands quarterback Willie Gaskin lobs a deep ball for the Anthony Johnson. Makes a great leaping grab to set up the first and goal inside the five. Later in the drive, Gaskin calls his own number, powers in for the one-yard touchdown. Highlands leads 20-7, the final from the SAISD Sports Complex. Lanier comes back to take it 21-20. The Sam Houston Hurricanes, the Brackenridge Eagles on the outside of the playoff picture, trying to start the night and looking good to do something about it here. First quarter, Sam Houston on the Brack 13-yard line. Quarterback Albert Goodlow keeps it on the option read, sees a hole, races in the end zone, picking up a great... Downfield block, 7-0 Hurricanes. The Eagles respond. Xavier Carmargo gets the handoff. Got room to run. Scores from 18 yards out on touch. Game tied at 7 to the big game coverage scoreboard to see the final on that one for you. And there it is. In overtime, 27-24. Sam Houston over Brackenridge. Lanier over Highlands, 21-20. Elsewhere, Harlandale falls to Burbank, 32-22. And 27-14, New Braunfels Canyon over Seguin. The Steel Cheerleaders welcome us to Linhoff Stadium. Number one, Knights nice hosting East Central. Steel strikes first. Jadon Bailey walks in for one. One yard touchdown, seven nothing lead. Then the next possession, they get on board again. This time the handoff goes to Avian Ferro. He bursts through the line, steps out of a tackle there, and he's gone for a 62 yard touchdown. Nicely 14 nothing. They take it 49 3 over at Rutland Stadium. Justin hosting San Marcos. Second quarter, Rattlers trailing 14 to 7, looking for the game time score. But the Judson senior, Kalen Carter, forces a fumble. Julius Calhoun picks it up, takes it the other direction, breaking one tackle on his way for the 37 yard fumble return touchdown. Rockets take the lead 27 21 7, I should say it has not gone final is 55 35 Justin in the fourth the Reagan Rattlers back at 12's top 12 after their win over Johnson last week tonight facing the Churchill Chargers first quarter Reagan trying to set up a screen here but Wayne Roundtree the big defensive lineman comes over the interception look at him go he's going to get caught from behind at the two yard line but not before he returns at 53 yards the Chargers capitalize on that Harold Relaford punches it in seven nothing Churchill but Reagan blasts back to win it 44 to seven the Lee fans are fired up trying to cheer on their school to a win Madison up 21 one nothing in the second. Looking for more. Quarterback Landon Gill takes a snap. He's rolling out to his right. Fires downfield to wide open Tommy Brown, who makes a nice leaping grab on his way to the 35-yard touchdown. 28 nothing. Madison has had back to the big game coverage scoreboard to see if that's gone final, and it has 56 to seven. Madison over Lee is Reagan over Churchill 44 to seven. Steel down in East Central 49 to three. 55 to 35 win for Judson right now, but that is still in the four. Jay Mustangs mascot dancing on the sideline, looking for an upset against Harlan tonight. Second quarter. Quarter. The Harlan Hawks are up 17 to 12, looking to extend that lead. Hawks running back Jacob Gonzalez takes a handoff, powers forward into that pile. Looks like he goes down, but he pops out of that pile and scores on the nine yard touchdown to make it 24 12. Harlan wins it 47 27. The Roosevelt Rough Riders trying to become playoff eligible, but they have to get back to Clark tonight for a chance. Good start first quarter. The Rough Riders on the attack. Quarterback Brian Roder finds Devin Tennyson Shepard in the flat. He makes one move to the outside and gets off to the race and gets knocked out of bounds of the two. Not before picking up 26. Brennan Carroll caps off the drive with the muscles in for the touchdown 7 0 Roosevelt. Final from Ferris Clark who takes it 34 29. Say hello to the Titans. Southwest Legacy Stadium. Titans hosting Eagle Pass win. Legacy up 17 0. Late in the fourth quarter, running back Fernando Flores takes a direct snap, keeps his legs churning for the three yard touchdown. That made it 24 0. That's how they win it 24 0. Kennedy Rockets hosting the Bernie Greyhounds tonight. The Rockets looking for their first district win. They will start from behind because the Greyhounds off to a fast start. Quarterback Jackson Bays throwing a timing route to Brandon Bays in the end zone with a 23-yard touchdown. 7-0 Bernie. Back to the big game coverage scoreboard for that final as well. 49-7. Bernie with the big win. Eagle Pass win shut out by Southwest Legacy. 24-0. John Jay falls to Harlan. 47-27. Clark over Roosevelt outscoring them 34-29. The Somerset Bulldogs hosting a Memorial Miniman tonight with the Bulldogs trying to keep pace with Bernie in District 14 4 a Division 1. First quarter, the Bulldogs take the first spike. Colby Isbell on the quick pass to Jaden Foz on the near sideline. He has room to run down the sideline. He goes and dies in for the 30-yard score. 7-0 Somerset, the final from Bulldog Stadium. 70-0 Somerset. Here comes Randolph, ready to take on Cole at Mickler Memorial Field in District 13-3, Division 1. Rohawks get on the board first. Opening drive, quarterback Aaron Davis decides to keep it himself. Right up the middle, racing the end zone untouched for the 16-yard touchdown. Extra point was good to make it 7-0. The final, Rohawks win it 49-7. And homecoming from West Camp.
campus here tonight as they take on Nixon Smiley. Nixon Smiley all smiles as they're up 27 nothing in the second quarter. No slowing down the Mustangs quarterback. Luke Moses rolls out to his left, spins, then throws back across the field to Brandon Martinez races down the sign, 22 yards scored to make it 34 to nothing. The final from Bobcat, 41 to nothing. Nixon Smiley strike at the band over Central Catholic as they take on Concordian Luther. Now a Tomball, second quarter. The buttons are down seven nothing, not for long. Buttons on the 26. Concordia Jonathan Weinkamp takes a handoff, starts up the middle, takes a break, it's a tackle there, bounces to the outside, powers his way for the score to tie the game at seven all. Back to the big game coverage scoreboard to see if that is final. And our neighbors across the street come away with a win, 35-27. Somerset over Memorial. On a shutout, 70 to nothing. Randolph Downs Cole, it's Air Force against Army there, 49 to 7. Nixon Smiley over South Sand West, 41 to nothing. We're just getting started. Up next, our big game coverage road trip, fan cam, more ice and board scores when we come back. But first, let's listen to the Stevens Falcons marching band. Our big game coverage road trip has Larry, photographer Eddie Latigo, headed up north and stops in Smithson Valley to Brothels and Davenport. That's where we find our Larry Ramirez, now live, thrown to the wolves, Larry. Hope you're okay. <laughs> Yeah, we're doing great, Greg. Thank you very much. You know, this is the first time we've made this trip this season as part of the BGC road trip. And I'm telling you what, we had a lot of fun. So let's start in Spring Branch where the Smithson Valley Rangers were going for their sixth straight win. <laughs> District 12, 5A1 front runner, the Smithson Valley Rangers, taking the field to host the Bernie Champion Chargers tonight. First quarter, Rangers knocking on the door. Quarterback Chase Sinelik throws to Daniel McBride. He uses a stiff arm to pick up 11 yards down to the Chargers' six-yard line. Very next play, handoff goes to Doug Lance, and he powers in for the touchdown. Big hit at the goal line, and the Rangers led 7 to nothing with 8.14 to go in the first quarter. Next game has us in New Braunfels, where the pink crew is pumping up the student section. Always rowdy. Unicorns hosting Clemens. First quarter tied at 7. Handoff goes to Tyreek Johnson. He cuts to his right. He has nothing but open field thanks to his offensive line, and Johnson takes the ball 35 yards to the end zone. Touchdown. New Braunfels takes a 14-7 to lead with 133 remaining in the first quarter. Game three saw the Davenport Wolves busting out of their tunnel after halftime to continue play with the Lampasas Badgers. Third quarter, Wolves leading 35-21 and driving. Tristan Hamlin hands it off to Shaston Golden. He waits for his blockers and picks up 15 yards down to the Badgers. Ten. Moments later, Hamlin with the play action. Then he throws to Emmett Griman. Five-yard touchdown, and the Wolves extend their lead to 42-21. to Let's go to the road trip scoreboard now. Smithson Valley takes it 49 to nothing. New Braunfels gets the dub 38-21, and Davenport is a winner 55-34. to And how about this? Davenport is a first-year varsity program. They're now 7-1 overall, 2-1 in District 13-4-A-1. Not too shabby. Greg, back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Larry. Time now for Fan Camp. You are one of our fans. Help us cover one of the big games in our big game coverage tonight here. Here's our Andrew Seeley. Here tonight at the Coliseum, Piper hosting Veterans Memorial. Patriots strike first. Opening drive, handoff goes to James Peoples. He jukes to the near sideline, throws a stiff arm, and he is gone. 18 yards to the house. It's 7 0 Patriots. Warriors answer back. A few minutes later, quarterback Jake Strachan rolls to his right and slings it to Jax Legrand in the back of the end zone. That's a seven yard touchdown, and we're all tied at seven. But the Patriots come right back down the field. Peoples again, this time knifing his way into the end zone from four yards out. Veterans Memorial leads 14-7. People scored another touchdown later in the first quarter, and as fan cam departs at the end of the first quarter, Veterans Memorial leads Piper 21-7. From Warrior Coliseum, Andrew Seeley, KSAT 12 Sports. All right, let's thank, uh, thank a lot, Andrew, and let's take a look at that final. It's 42-28, Veterans Memorial with a win, and MacArthur oh, on the road gets a big win there, 28-24. The Spurs get their first ever road win tonight, 137-134 in Indiana. Okay. Good win. Thank you. We'll Greg. take it. You got it. All right, good. We'll be right back after this. So tomorrow, making it into the 80s, mid 80s locally, even some upper 80s out there. Pleasanton, Poteet, Divine, about 88 the high temperature. Wouldn't surprise me if we have a few 90s on the map the next couple of afternoons. Warm and breezy with increasing humidity this weekend. Then some scattered rain greets us on Monday. Yeah, and that's what we want. Fingers mm -hmm. crossed for that. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Have a fabulous weekend. Have a good night. We'll see you back here this